Hello and welcome, my name is Dude Machine. Thank you for joining me for another technique discussion video. It probably goes without saying, but as a big famous professional artist, I get a ton of fan mail. I have so much fan mail all the time. I could barely have time to read it all, but I do because I love my fans. You're special to me. You're my doodle family and I love you. Today we're going to be reading a letter from Debbie. Dear Doodle Machine, I'm enjoying your postings and videos, although often my takeaway is that I see what you're doing but can't fathom the creative process behind the work. I would like to bother you for a quick question. Could you suggest tools I'd need for basic sketching? I have a bit of time and one area that I could use improvement is being able to sketch out concepts. Not with the goal of final art, but being able to better share ideas. Now I use a piece of paper and pencil on a scanner and it's quite limiting. I found tutorials, but I'm wondering what hardware I need and to see if the cost is worth the gain. What would you recommend? Thanks, Doodle Machine. You're the best artist in the world and you're really funny and handsome. From Debbie. Well, thanks for the letter, Debbie. Um, especially the part about me being funny and handsome. Can't argue with that. And that's also a great question. How do you get started with digital sketching? Let's talk about that. All right, so let's start things off by getting on the same page here. What is digital sketching? Now, as I've discussed on this channel um, a few times, there's lots of ways to do digital art. Check out my raster versus vector video, link below, um, if you want to learn more. But really, there's no one size fits all approach. For example, you can draw pictures with pens and scan them, and then color them on the computer with a mouse. Or you could make digital art from scratch with a mouse and keyboard in vector programs like Adobe Illustrator. Or you could draw with a tablet and stylus like an Android tablet or an iPad and an Apple Pencil. Or even just use your phone and your finger. Or you can get one of those fancy screens that you can draw on. I've used these before and they're great. I don't have one though because they're pretty expensive. And I can do what I do with a drawing tablet that lets you draw with a pen on the tablet and this controls your art program on the computer screen. So there are lots of ways that you can make art digitally and what's best for you will depend on what you wanna do and how much power and control you need and how professional you need the finished artwork to be. But that's not what Debbie asked. She asked, what tools do I need for basic sketching so I can be an amazing, talented, famous artist like you when I grow up? And Debbie was on to something there because there's a difference between making digital art and sketching. So what's the difference? When I think of sketching, I think of rough drawings. I mean, that's what they are. They're, they're quick freehand drawings that aren't intended to be a final piece of artwork. You do sketches to practice drawing or to get some of your rough ideas down on paper. Maybe you're, you're trying some ideas out or you need to record your, your thought process, or maybe you just need to, to draw something to show someone an idea that you really don't need a finished piece of art for. Now, when I think of digital art, I think of something that's more than a sketch. I mean, it doesn't mean that sketches can't be digital art, but the concept of digital art in, in general, I think it should be much bigger than sketches. We're talking about digital paintings and layouts and designs and illustrations, pieces of artwork that have been worked on and perfected to be finished pieces of art rather than just a simple sketch. So Debbie wanted to know what tools she could get to get started with digital sketching. And luckily you, you don't need much. At its core to make digital sketches, you need something to draw with something to draw on and a program to use to make your drawing. So right now I'll go over the basic options that I'd suggest for somebody just getting started with digital sketching. With these suggestions, there's one basic rule that I'll say right now. Don't buy what you don't need. I mean, lots of people, they make the mistake of thinking they need to go all in. If you're going to be getting into digital art professionally, then, then yeah, get, get the good stuff. Um, but if you're just starting out, I'd say just go for the, the cheapest option that you can use to do what you want to do. <laughs> there are lots of more like 
advanced tools and, and hardware you can get that are, are really gonna be just more than you need, especially when you're, you're just getting started. To do some basic drawings and sketches, you just need, you need basic hardware and, and basic software. And then, then later on down the line, if you, if you want to get more professional with your approach, you can splurge on the good stuff at that point, but you don't need it to start. For example, a tablet and stylus are a great way for you to get started with digital sketching for not much money. Maybe you already have a tablet, so you know, you could use that. Or if you're getting a tablet, and any tablet will do. Here I am using a cheap modified Amazon Fire tablet, which is an Android tablet and it works just fine. I can do sketches on this. The drawing feels natural and it's big enough that I can comfortably work the way I like. I'm using a really cheap Amazon Basics stylus right here. So you can get some fancy styluses that feel better if you want, but even a basic stylus will, will get you started with digital sketching. One downside to an approach like this, where you're using a basic Android tablet and stylus, is that your, your drawings won't be as professional as they can be. I know this is just for getting started, but most Android tablets and styluses, the main thing, they don't have pressure sensitivity built in, so your line work will be very basic. I mean, you can make it work for you, um, especially if you, you learn how to use the programs and ways to, to, to achieve what you want to achieve, but your drawings won't ever feel as natural as they would be without something a little bit more professional. Now an iPad and an Apple Pencil is an amazing combination. With this, you can draw on the screen with much more precision. And the Apple Pencil is even pressure sensitive, so it should feel much more natural than the basic Android stylus. You can press harder or softer to do line work that's thicker and thinner, or shading that's darker and lighter depending on the pressure you place as you draw. The iPad is also a powerful device, so you can work on bigger artboards and use more professional programs with fancier visual effects. And the main problem with an Apple iPad and Pencil is that they're expensive. So honestly, unless you already have an iPad or, or if you're looking to get you know, professional with your work, you really don't need this level of cost and complexity because the basic version really is enough for you to get started with. The other main option is to go with a drawing tablet that you can use with your computer. Now, most people already have a computer, um, so this is a really good option. It doesn't matter if you have a Mac or a PC. I'm a PC guy. There's a ton of free options for software as well, so you won't be limited in any way. Now, as far as the tablets themselves go, there's lots of options and like everything we talked about, lots are more expensive and professional than others. But really, I think the best option to get started with is the basic version. Take a look at this. This is a basic cheap drawing tablet that I picked up on Amazon for my kid and it was like 30 bucks. So there's lots of different cheap brands out there. And honestly, they're probably all about the same. So just go with whatever brand gets good reviews and is the physical size that you want it to be. I mean, lots of people, this is a small one. Lots of people can't stand tiny tablets. Um, I don't really have a problem with them. I used a tiny tablet like this for a long time. Um, so, I mean, I think you'll know if a, a small tablet is right for you, if you're okay with drawing small pictures. I mean, when you work, do you use a small little sketchbook or do you use big sketchbooks? Or do you not really care one way or the other? Keep in mind that your drawing tablet size is not fully used when you're drawing. There's a smaller area within the tablet. That is the live area. These tablets also come with a pen and it's a pressure sensitive pen. So you should be able to do some very natural feeling sketching and drawings that have a very professional feel. I'd say that even a very cheap drawing tablet connected to a computer can give you even higher quality sketches and digital art capabilities than an expensive iPad and Apple Pencil. So don't feel like you're cheaping out by going this route. If you want to get a slightly better brand, then go with the tried and true Wacom tablets. They have some inexpensive options that work really well. I used the cheapest tablets I could afford for a long time when I was getting started with digital art, and they never really prevented me from doing anything. From sketching, to making vector artwork, to digital painting, I had no issues. There are more expensive drawing tablets for the computer. For instance, this is my go-to tablet that I've had for many years. It's the Wacom Intuos Pro. When you do lots of digital art and you're very familiar with all the techniques you'll be using, getting a good quality tablet like this is a big improvement. There's much more sensitivity in the pen, so you can do more precise work. The tablets are usually bigger, so they make doing details on large drawings feel much more precise. 
And there's some other features like integrated buttons that can be programmed with menus or hotkeys. I personally don't actually use these, but lots of people like them. And the pen itself feels much more accurate because of that enhanced sensitivity. And the professional tablets even have tilt detection, so you can do things like shade on an angle to get just the right brush strokes. These tablets are probably the best in the industry, but they're much more expensive than the basic version. So again, I'm gonna suggest that you go with just the, the cheapest option that'll do what you need and then go for the good stuff a year or two down the road if you decide you're gonna stick with it and you need to take your art to the next level. Oh, and there's also super fancy expensive screens that you can draw on, like the Wacom Cintiq series. They're great, but I never felt that they gave me an advantage over just a regular Wacom tablet. Maybe it's just me. I know lots of people love these devices, so I'm not here to say it won't be right for you, but I can definitely say they're not right for you if you're just starting out because they are very expensive. The hardware is the biggest choice you have to make when getting started with uh, digital sketching, but you also need to decide on some software. Now, if you're already familiar with some art programs, you know, like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, then, then just go with those because you know how to use them. But if you're just starting out from scratch, there are lots of free programs and cheap programs you can use to get started. So, you know, maybe start with those and then upgrade your software when you're ready to take it to the next level. Um, check out my video in, linked in the description, um, the raster versus vector video. I describe some good um, paid and free software. For the purpose of this discussion, for someone who's just getting started with digital sketching, I'd say that ArtRage is the perfect choice. Our rage is pretty cheap. It's like 50 bucks. And once you buy it, you own it forever. Unlike the Adobe programs that have a monthly fee. The reason I'm suggesting Art Rage is because it's easy to learn and easy to use. The tools are all right there on the screen and there's not a million complex options that you need to understand. It's all basic stuff like this paintbrush. I can change the size of the brush over here or even holding down the shift on the keyboard. I can change the loading and how thin or thick the paint is. All the options are said in plain English, so you can easily understand them or at least figure them out pretty quickly. For sketching, there are pencils, pastels, and pens that work great for sketching and they look pretty close to the real thing. Our rage is simple to use, but it's very powerful. Um, I use it often to make professional illustrations for my projects. I even illustrated an entire children's book in our rage. It's one of my favorite programs to use because it's fun, it looks great, and it's easy. Well, Debbie, I hope this helps you out a bit to get started with digital sketching. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions. And if any of you have any tips for Debbie for getting started with digital art, please let them know in the comments below. While you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, click the thumbs down button if you dislike it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching.